Imagine this, a young man becomes rebellious after going through trauma, and he starts lying to get attention. But when danger is near, no one believes his word. That's the movie Paranoid, so come with me, and let's recap. The film begins by showing Kale with his father at the lake because they were very close. His father was teaching him how to fish, a monthly ritual even though they never caught any fish. Right from the start, the movie reveals that the father is the most charismatic character. Kale liked to lie to grab attention, claiming he got Shirley pregnant and would live with her in a trailer. His father, who claimed to be a writer and could tell when someone was lying, didn't buy it. On the way home, he called his mother, saying they caught a lot of fish that would last for the whole week. This is where everything goes wrong. A teenager is driving, talking on the phone, and playing around. The chance of something going wrong is significant. Another car speeds past them, and they find it strange. Suddenly, they swerve because there's a car stopped on the shoulder, and they couldn't avoid it. They both survive, and his father reassures him that everything will be okay. However, another car comes from behind, and Kale manages to escape, but I think his father might have died. A year passes, and we see Kale in his Spanish class. They have to present what they did during the summer vacation in Spanish. His friend Ronnie says he spent the summer at the beach with several girls. The teacher gives Kale the floor, but he can't say anything because he didn't study or do anything over the summer. When the teacher asks what his father would think, he punches the teacher. As a result, he ends up in juvenile court, where the judge acknowledges that losing a father is not easy, but in this year, he has been detained for many things. He's sentenced to three months of house arrest. In other words, you're condemning a young man to not go to school and stay at home. If I had known, I would have done the same in my time. At home, the police officer places an ankle monitor on him, stating that he couldn't stray more than 30 meters from the connection modem. His mother faces a loss, having to pay $9 per day for the equipment, totaling over $800 for the three months. The police officer, claiming to be the cousin of the Spanish teacher, assures her he will keep an eye on Kale. Kale spends his days watching TV, eating junk food, and not having much to do. During this time, he hasn't entered his father's office, which remains as he left it. When he attempts to access his gaming and music accounts, he finds them blocked. His mother, frustrated with his constant TV watching, unplugs it and instructs him to tidy up the house, as she now has to work double to pay the bills. He continues to portray himself as a rebellious teenager. During this period, he does the laundry, starts building a tower of snacks, and tries to find a way to remove the ankle monitor without triggering the alarm, distancing himself from his mother. One day, he notices a family moving in next door and becomes intrigued by a unique young woman. The doorbell rings, but it's a bag on fire filled with dog feces, a prank played by the youths from the neighboring house. He chases after them but forgets about the proximity restriction, and just when he thinks he made it back in time, the police officer appears, humiliates him, and handcuffs him. His neighbor witnesses the scene, and his mother calls, warning him to behave or face a hearing without protection. Kale, clever and resourceful, marks the distance he can reach in the garden. The modem is in his house, so all he needs to do is move it to go where he wants. He goes to his father's office, observes the neighbor through the window, and witnesses her preparing for something special. When things are about to heat up, Ronnie rings the doorbell, and they both start teasing. Kale reveals that during these days, he observed the neighbors and discovered the one across the street cheating with the maid, while the one next door mowed the lawn twice a day. When they check the new neighbor, she's enjoying the pool. Kale is contemplating when he notices the new neighbor, Ashley, approaching. He pretends to need help retrieving mail and strikes up a conversation. He explains the ankle monitor as a result of people being overly cautious. She introduces herself as Ashley, and he almost jokes about spicing her up with some salt since she lacks flavor. As he heads home, he catches a news report about a killer using a wrecked Mustang but dismisses it. Looking out the window again, he sees Ashley doing yoga. Suddenly, her father appears, arguing with her. Kale doesn't understand the situation, and she abruptly shuts everything down. He lies on his bed to play a game and notices the neighbor arriving late with a dented blue Mustang. He ignores it until he recalls the news report, realizing it matches the suspect's description. He becomes alarmed, and his mother startles him. The next day, he reads a newspaper article about missing red-haired girls in another city. He observes the neighbor through the fence, suspecting him of wrongdoing. However, the neighbor is only tending to his garden. Kale calls Ronnie, and they research the cases, discovering 10 missing women with no suspect found by the police. While Kale watches the neighbor, Ronnie makes noise, and they hide, fearing Ashley saw them. When they check, she's gone, and the doorbell rings, spelling trouble. Ashley rings the bell and questions their activities. 
they claim to be playing games, and she enters, inspecting their room. Both Kale and Ronnie have mischievous intentions. Kale mentions the suspicious neighbor, comparing his car to the suspects, but Ashley sees him leaving the garage, and the car is undamaged. They become friends, and Ashley suggests ordering pizza because the young people there are better than the adults in their neighborhood. She notes that in the previous city, victims were found in an abandoned house because the suspect used fake names. They decide to keep watch overnight, and when Ronnie falls asleep, it's Kale's time to shine. Ashley asks to draw on his ankle monitor. They notice the neighbor returning with a distinctive redhead, seemingly enjoying a normal evening. The redhead starts dancing, and Kale tries to identify the music on the computer, successfully guessing, but suddenly, the neighbor pulls out a knife. Panicking, Kale and Ronnie realize it's just to remove a tag from the woman's dress. A dynamic shift occurs between Kale and Ashley, but Ronnie wakes up and interrupts the moment. Ashley's mother calls, prompting her to leave since she stayed out late. Upon returning home, Kale discovers that the troublesome youths who taught him have been watching the distinctive films, narrowly avoiding being caught by his mother. Later, Kale hears a strange sound and realizes the redhead is running through the house in distress, with the guy chasing her. Accidentally triggering the camera flash, he panics. When he checks, the neighbor is staring directly at him. Desperate, he calls Ronnie, but then glimpses the redhead leaving in her car, questioning if he's becoming paranoid. The next morning, the neighbor shows up, claiming he helped Kale's mom with her car trouble. Kale senses something is off but lacks concrete proof. The neighbor suggests peculiar ideas, and when Kale responds, his mom thinks he's being rude. Listening to their conversation, Ashley warns Kale to be cautious, suggesting it might all be in his head. She shares her high school struggles, and he becomes jealous and paranoid. During a party at Ashley's house, Kale notices many guys hitting on her. In response, he disrupts the atmosphere with loud music. The doorbell rings, and he thinks it's Ashley, but it's the youths throwing rotten eggs at him. Ashley enters through the window, demanding an explanation. Threatening to throw his phone out, she insists he explain his behavior. Kale admits to spying on her through the window, claiming he knew she was different and facing issues at home. They engage in a tense exchange, but Ashley hears a strange sound, discovering the neighbor carrying a blood-stained bag into the garage. The next day, Ashley follows the neighbor to a store, while Ronnie attempts to retrieve the garage door opener's code from his car. Struggling with the opener, Ronnie gets nervous. Ashley loses track of the neighbor in the store. As she leaves the parking lot, he appears in front of her car. In the car, he questions if she's interested in him and suggests respecting privacy. She's frightened and heads home. Ashley, scared, insists they should stop before things get worse, emphasizing that he hasn't done anything. His mother calls, and Ashley returns home. Kyle is setting up a control system to open the garage and some cameras when a frantic Ronnie appears. He left his phone in the car, and if the neighbor finds them, they're in trouble. Kyle plans to observe through the window while Ronnie retrieves the phone. Everything seems to be going well until they decide to investigate the bloodstained bag. Ronnie claims to find hair and panics, realizing someone is there. He runs through the house, leaving Kyle uncertain. To protect his friend, Kyle grabs a baseball bat and heads to the neighbor's house, but the police arrive just in time. Trying to explain his friend's presence and the neighbor's suspicious activities, the police accuse Kyle of leaving his designated area and trespassing. Kyle insists there's something dead in the neighbor's garage. When the police check, it's just a deer the neighbor hit and brought home to bury. No one believes Kyle, and his mother is at a loss, as he disobeys everyone. His mother decides to apologize to the neighbor before he files a complaint. Ronnie calls, and the TV shows an image of his unconscious mother, revealing it's a prank. Angry and betrayed, Kyle realizes having a friend like Ronnie is more trouble than it's worth. While his mother talks to the neighbor, Ronnie transfers the images to the computer and notices something strange. Zooming in on a low-resolution TechPix image, he sees the deceased redhead. Suddenly, it starts raining, and Ronnie, in the kitchen, is hit by a baseball bat. Kyle tries to flee, realizing Ronnie was right, and attempts to disconnect the modem for the police to arrive, but he fails. As he runs outside the designated area, he is caught and knocked unconscious. When he wakes up, the neighbor claims he was trying to live a normal life without anyone discovering his actions. Kyle, discredited as the crazy young man making up stories, faces a dire situation. 
Ashley enters the house, and a fight ensues. The neighbor falls down the stairs, and she tries to call the police but has no signal. They escape onto the roof, fall into the pool, and the alarm sounds. Kyle enters the house to find his mother, discovering a hidden pipeline filled with people. He explores several surgery rooms, realizing something bizarre is happening there. The police officer, irritated and about to call for backup, is attacked by the neighbor before he can do so. Kyle falls into a hole filled with water and bodies. When he climbs out, he discovers his mother hanging, and the neighbor appears. In a close call, his mother shields him, and he manages to stab the neighbor in the chest. The neighbor dies of a broken heart, and the police arrive just in time. Kyle is released for good behavior, having taken care of the neighbor. Now, he starts dating Ashley and invites the troublesome youth's mother over while they watch distinctive films because revenge is always sweet. And that concludes the movie Paranoid. If you enjoyed the story, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's finish the year as a slightly traumatized but happy family. Now, I'm out. Thanks to everyone who stuck around, and see you next time.